Welcome to Breakdown, where we give you helpful mortgage information and tips related to home loans. I'm Craig Cook, and this topic today is about conventional loans. Remember, if you want to stay in tune with the latest uh, mortgage insights, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and share if you thought this video was informative, and uh, click the bell icon if you want to um, get notifications for any new content that comes out. So let's get right into it. I try to keep these videos um, pretty short, 10 minutes or less. So conventional loans. What is a conventional loan? It's a mortgage that's not insured or guaranteed by the government. Typically, conventional mortgages are protected by private and insurance companies. And the protection you, as a consumer or a buyer, may know as PMI, right? PMI is an insurance um, that's paid <clears throat> for a conventional loan if you're doing high percentage financing. But the main purpose of that insurance is to protect the bank in case you default on the loan. Um, most government loans have their own set insurance to protect uh, the bank in case of a default. So the most common conventional mortgages are sold on the secondary market to government-sponsored enterprises, better known as GSEs, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And you might have heard about Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac before. Most lenders follow these guidelines for these two companies when offering home loans because they purchase a large majority of the conventional mortgages, right? So <clears throat> probably one of the most common loans that is available besides FHA that's offered to the public. Who's a conventional loan for? This loan is best for home buyers that have good credit or large down payments. So it's not necessary that you have great credit to get a conventional loan. In fact, the next bullet point says that you can have a minimum credit score of 620. The issue normally is, is that if you don't have good credit with a conventional loan, um, your, your, it could be more of expensive and of an interest rate or monthly payment. Borrowers that have 5% or more in down payment funds, <clears throat> um, they also offer programs at 3% or more in down, or 3% down payment programs for first time home buyers. Uh, borrowers who have less than a 49% debt to income ratio. And all that means is that, um, Usually the requirements for debt to income ratio are a little bit less than 49%, meaning 49% of your gross earnings monthly uh, are spent towards the new mortgage payment and the minimal li liability showing up on the credit report or any other liabilities that have to be counted against you. Um, that's as high as they'll go. It doesn't mean that there are situations where you wouldn't be eligible or you would be you know, wouldn't be able to get the loan because you had a 45% debt to income ratio. It's really, that's the ceiling. It can't go any higher. There's no way you're going to get a loan above that debt to income ratio. Um, file must <clears throat> score approved or accept eligible through specific underwriting systems. So every loan has a universal software uh, that has to be used in order to determine its eligibility. <clears throat> for Fannie Mae, it's called Desktop Originator or Underwriter. For Freddie Mac, it's Loan Prospector. These software engines are used universally across the industry, and it must get that status. Um, <clears throat> and there are other statuses that are acceptable, but the likelihood that you'll be able to get a loan traditionally from a bank at a lesser status than those two is very difficult. Um, best suited for borrowers that have 680 or 780 credit scores. And the main reason is, is because if you have a 680, 780 credit scores uh, in that range, it increases your chances of getting accepted through that automated software, the automated underwriting engine, and also helps you to get larger percentage financing at pretty competitive interest rates and mortgage insurance. <clears throat> Why choose a conventional loan? So borrowers that have credit scores can get lower interest rates and private mortgage insurance. So if you have a 780 credit score, <clears throat> it's 
you're going to have an opportunity to get really low mortgage insurance. Um, and that's a pain, something you're going to pay with a conventional loan if you're borrowing more than 80% of the purchase price. And most of these government loans that are offered USDA and FHA, they have um, monthly insurance components. FHA has probably the most expensive uh, and you're going to pay the same insurance rate, the same cost per month as somebody that has a 500 credit score or, is, you know, a 580 credit score, whatever that may be. <clears throat> so you get no advantage of, ha of having a great credit score with FHA, but with conventional, you do. And there's a lot of different factors that play a part or play a role in getting uh, cheaper mortgage insurance, including down payment, the property type, but credit score is a, a main component. So you have the ability to get a lower monthly payment with a conventional loan at higher credit scores. And typically we see you're going to, you know, at higher percentage financing at 95%, 90%, it's best to have a credit score in the 700 range to really be competitive or more competitive than the other loan types. PMI gets cheaper the more money you put down. <clears throat> Whereas an FHA loan or even a USDA loan, the, the, the factor, the percentage of what you're paying in insurance remains the same um, regardless of what you put down. With FHA, it gets slightly cheaper, but it's relatively the same. Whereas if you're you know, borrowing, let's say, 85% of the pr uh, purchase price of a property, you're really going to pay a significant difference than what you would pay for an FHA loan. So for example, FHA at 10% down is a factor of 0.80% of your loan amount annually. Whereas if you were doing a conventional loan with 10% down and had a 780 credit score annually, you might be paying, let's just say, 0.3% um, of, of, of your loan amount, <clears throat> which is a significant difference. So the better your credit score, the private mortgage insurance gets cheaper. It's not always the fact with those government loans where you're not going to have a significant difference in your monthly payment going lower. Um, it allows for a lower down payment than FHA if you're a first-time home buyer, right? FHA allows a 3.5% down payment. You can go as low as 3% down payment with certain programs, first time home buyer loan, or there's products that are income restricted for first time home buyers that if you meet a certain income level, um, they're, uh, they're like community products. Um, they're very good for conventional financing. That's called Home Ready for Fannie Mae and Home Possible for Freddie Mac. PMI will eventually be removed from your loan um, uh, with a conventional loan versus FHA, where if you put less than 10% down, it'll never be removed, right? So for example, if you're borrowing 95% of the purchase price with a conventional loan, eventually the mortgage insurance will be automatically terminated as soon as you hit 78% um, of the original price of the house. Your balance would have to actually hit the 78% of the original starting point of your loan. Um, or you have an option of where you can petition to have it removed uh, from the servicing lender if you have enough equity in the property. With FHA, if you do maximum financing, let's say 3.5% down payment, that's for the life of the loan. So that's kind of a big deal with um, you know, why somebody might choose a conventional loan over an FHA loan. PMI can be paid differently with a conventional loan. Government loans, there's only one way, right? So FHA, you have to not only pay an upfront premium for the insurance, which is a cost, a settlement fee that you have to pay, but you pay that monthly component. It can't be changed. With conventional, because it's private companies that we're going to to get this insurance, you actually can pay it differently, meaning you can pay it as a monthly component. You can pay it all as one lump sum for the life of the loan, or you can pay a split, meaning you pay a portion up front and a lower amount monthly than you would if you just did a monthly only option. So you can get really creative in a sense with 
a conventional loan with mortgage insurance. It also gives you an advantage when making an offer to a seller. Um, as you might know, certain markets, especially seller markets, sellers that have the upper hand, they get to choose which offers they want to accept, right? And if you have, let's just say one property that's really popular right now, or an area that's really popular, the house goes on the market, you have 10 different offers on the house, a seller would want to choose the loan that makes the most sense or the buyer that has the loan that's going to buy their property that makes the most sense to them. And sometimes with FHA or different government loans, they look at those loans as a disadvantage or a risk to them, maybe because those loan types have stricter appraisal requirements in some cases, or they don't know a lot about the buyer on the other end and know that government loans allow more flexibility with credit issues. Since they don't know your credit score, they can assume, right? And you don't want people to assume, they can assume that you might not have the, you might have more of a risk of not getting that loan or more of a chance of not getting that loan than a conventional buyer. So automatically when you have a conventional loan, it puts the seller more at ease than a government loan because of those reasons. How do you find out if you qualify for a conventional loan? It's simple. You complete a loan application. You submit documents to support the application like W-2s, pay stubs, bank statements, photo ID, that type of stuff. And then complete a consultation and go over the details of how this loan can help you. I hope you found this um, video very, very helpful. I'm going to put some links in the description to where to apply uh, for our company. If you're interested in a conventional loan, you can see here there's different um, uh, URL links for you to go check out the privacy policy or our disclosures as a company. Um, you can look us up on Google. We're a local lender here in Voorhees, New Jersey. And hopefully this uh, video taught you a little bit about conventional loans. It's certainly not all of it, but I want to keep these videos nice and short. Thanks for watching the video.